Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum, the refreshing, delicious treat that gives you chewing enjoyment, presents for your listening enjoyment, The Lineup. Ladies and gentlemen, in just a moment, we will take you by transcription behind the scenes of a police headquarters in a great American city, where under the cold, glaring lights will pass before us the innocent, the vagrant, the thief, the murderer. This is the lineup. Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum refreshes you. Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum gives you real chewing enjoyment. Yes, for chewing enjoyment plus refreshment, it's Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum. The lively, delicious flavor of Wrigley's Spearmint cools your mouth, helps keep your throat moist, and gives you a nice little lift. The good, smooth chewing of Wrigley's Spearmint helps keep you feeling fresh and alert, adds enjoyment to whatever you're doing. So for chewing enjoyment... Plus refreshment, treat yourself often to Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum. Healthful, refreshing, delicious. Ben. Hello, Quine. How many tonight? Oh, a bunch. Uh, 43. Mm-hmm. Anything interesting? Usual. You want to stick around? Yeah, quiet upstairs. Oh, um, Ash has got a birthday. Oh, oh, yeah. Tuesday, isn't it? Mm-hmm. You ought to get him something, huh? Sure. What? Mm, I don't know. Hadn't thought about it. He's got a watch, hasn't he? Uh, yeah. Hey, I have your attention, please. Maybe a sweater or something. <laughs> yeah. The I'll get with you later. The side of right. the wire in the audience room. May I have your attention, please? Thank you. My name is Cogger, Sergeant Pete Cogger. I'll explain the lineup to you. Each of the suspects you'll see will be numbered. I'll call off a number, their name, and charge. If you have any questions or identifications, please remember the number assigned to the prisoner as I call his name. If you're sure or not too sure of the suspect, have him held. The questions I ask these suspects are merely to get a natural tone of voice, so do not pay too much attention to their answers as they often lie. All right, bring on the line. (laughs) Okay, keep it moving right over here to the end of the stage. Now turn and face front, hands at your sides. Now when I call out your number, step out and face the room. I want you to talk up so everyone can hear you. It's a big room, there are a lot of people out there, so talk right up. All right, number one, Warren Gilman, robbery. Keep your head up, Warren. Where do you live? Main and Broadway. What is that, a hotel? Yeah, it's a hotel. What's the name of the hotel? Uh, the Fillmore. I've only been there a couple of days. How long have uh, you been in town? A couple of months. About, yeah, two or three months. You with anybody when you were arrested? Yeah, the guy I was sticking up. Oh, he got <laughs> Any weapons? What do you think I was sticking them up with, my finger? <laughs> I'll ask the questions, Warren. Sorry. Any weapons? Yeah. What were they? Just one, just a gun. Okay, what kind of a gun? What caliber? What? 38. What make and color? Chrome or blue steel? Make, uh, Smith & Wesson, I think. It was blue steel. You uh, always wear glasses, Warren? Yeah, except when I go to bed. (laughs) I wouldn't suggest you be quite so funny in court tomorrow. Sorry. Step back. Number two, Barney Babbitt, robbery. Stand up, Barney. I am. Well, raise your head a little. Far as it goes, I got arthritis. Better see a doctor. Right now? (laughs) We got nothing but comedians tonight. No offense, pardon me. You arrested with anybody, Barney? No, I pulled it along. Any weapons? You ever heard of a shoplifter carrying a gun? Just answer the question. I didn't have no weapons. Where do you live, Barney? East side, River Street. Where on River? The Atlas. Hotel? I guess so. What do you mean, you guess so? Well, some ben. of the folks who hmm? live there... Oh, the hi, Ashley. Can I see you? Oh, well, sure. Signs says hotel, but I can't guarantee you. What's up? Small just called in, hit and run, a woman. Hmm? How is she? Dead. Uh, 
All right, Doc. Hello, Ben. How long do you think? Oh, I'd say she was killed instantly, about 45 minutes ago, maybe 50. 15? Well, that'd make it around 7 o'clock. She was hit over there and dragged here. 58 feet exactly. Well, then the car was driving on the wrong side of the street. Yeah, then the car backed away. See those tire marks? Mm. Made a U-turn, went in the opposite direction. Uh, any identification, Swan? Uh, stuff in her handbag scattered all over the street. Here's a sales slip for some kind of a green dress. Maybe the one she's got on. Name and address on it. Uh, Mrs. Albert Lobdell, 1980 74th Street. That's only a couple of blocks away. Okay, Doc. You can take it away. All right. Anything else? Several pieces of glass from a broken headlight. That's about all. Any witnesses? Nobody saw or heard anything, but a woman over here says she knew the victim, Mrs. Judson. Uh, this is Miss Judson, Ben. She discovered the body and made the report. I was How never so shocked in my born days. Like to thought I was going to faint. Tell the lieutenant what you told me, Mrs. Judson. Well, I was on my way home from the drugstore when I saw her lying there all. Well, I got so scared, I almost ran all the way back to the store and called the police. We don't have a phone. I didn't know who she was then. It's dark around here. Uh, you her neighbor, ma'am? Well, I tried to be. What do you mean? Well, Mrs. Lobdell wasn't a very sociable woman. There aren't many houses around here, as you can see, and the few of us that live here ought to be friendly. Uh, what do you think Mrs. Lobdell was doing here? I tried to make friends with her, like a good neighbor should, but she wasn't much for being sociable-like. Uh, what do you think she was doing out here two blocks from where she lives? Well, going to the drugstore, same as I was, likely. Mm. You always use this route? All of us out this way do. It's a shortcut. I see. The bus stops at the drugstore, too. Maybe she was going somewhere. She was all dressed up in a new outfit. She told me only yesterday, oh, that's when she bought it, that it was the first new clothes she bought since she got married. Has she just been married? Oh, no, no. They got married about six months ago. Oh. They should do something about street lights here. It's well, just thank dr- you, ma'am. Uh, we'll report that. Give you the creeps around here. You wouldn't think you lived in a big city. Well, thanks very much. Your poor husband. He's the one that gets my sympathy. Yes, ma'am. Kind of liked him. He was more friendly yes, than Yes, thank she... you very much, Mrs. If there's Ch- anything else you want to know. Uh, we'll get in that touch with you. That officer has my address. We don't have a phone. Yes, thank you again. Small, as soon as you can, get those pieces of broken headlight down to the lab. Going over to see the husband? Yeah. This is the place. You check in with Central. I go tell him. Right. Yes? Mr. Lobdell? Yes. What is it? I'm Lieutenant Guthrie, police department. Police? Uh, may I come in? I'd like to talk to you a minute. I don't understand. Please. It'll be easy to talk inside, Mr. Lobdell. Oh, all right. Please sit down. Thank you. Let, let me clean this place up a little. I have a bad habit of scattering the paper all over the floor when I'm reading. Alice, my wife, raises the roof. Uh, that's why I'm here, Mr. Lobdell, about your wife. Uh, my wife? What do you mean? She's had an accident. Alice, in an accident? When did you last see her? Well, I, I imagine it must have been an hour ago. What is it, Lieutenant? What's happened? Do you know where she was going? Of course I know. She went to the drugstore to, to, to get some medicine for a cold. Was she wearing a green dress? Yeah, I think she was. I, I still don't see... I her. just want to be sure. Well, where is she? I'm... Your wife's dead, Mr. Lobdell. I'm sorry. What? Hit and run, two blocks from here. Dead? We found a handbag, and your neighbor, Mrs. Judson, identified her. Oh, no. No. I hate to tell you like this. And Mr. Lobdell... Yes? Is something Burning? Burning? It smells like something's burning, maybe in your kitchen. Oh, oh uh, yes. I, I guess she left the fire on. She she was coming right back. I'll get it. Oh, oh I'm sorry. Oh, it's, it's all right. Burn yourself? I should have known better. I'm going to use something to pick it up. The soup. She put on the soup for dinner. You better put some butter or something on that hand. That's all right. Oh, oh. Uh, can I see her, Lieutenant? We want an identification. They took it downtown. Uh-huh. Uh, yes? Oh, it's uh, Sergeant Asher. He's with me. Uh, how do you do? Uh, ben, I just got a call. The hit and run was picked up. The person who killed? Only the car. We haven't got the driver yet. Headlights smashed and the fuse. Where? 
In the rear of an old shack near Harbor and Yoakum, registered owner is a guy named Parkus, lives on Dorgan Street, about two miles from where he ditched the car. All right, we'll go over. What should I do? If you want to go downtown, you may. Ask for Sergeant Cargan. Sergeant Cargan? Yeah. Well, thank you, Mr. Lobdell. I... I'm sorry about this. Yeah, yeah. I'd better get my coat. Good night. Night. Good night. How'd he take it? Mm, pretty good. Ben, what did you do to your hand? Mm, burned it on a pan full of tomato soup. You, you what? Uh, good deed for the day. Friends, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, you'll enjoy chewing Wrigley Spearmint Gum. Chew Wrigley Spearmint while you're working. The lively, full-bodied flavor of Wrigley Spearmint gives you a refreshing little lift. The smooth, pleasant chewing of Wrigley Spearmint Gum helps keep you feeling relaxed and satisfied, makes your job seem easier. Chew Wrigley Spearmint Gum in your home, when you're out walking or driving, when you're enjoying outdoor sports and other activities. Wrigley Spearmint Gum tastes good anytime, and the natural chewing aids digestion and helps keep your teeth bright and attractive. Yes, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, you'll enjoy chewing Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum. Healthful, refreshing, delicious. Now, back to the lineup. I just got here. Uh, this is Mr. Parkus, Lieutenant Guthrie. Yeah. How do you do? Find my car? He claims a report of his car stolen, Ben. Did you check it? Yeah, I called in. Then you hadn't found it. Old squad of police. Not one of you guys knows anything about it. And it takes what? a little time, Mr. Parkus. Any old model like that, I suppose you people don't consider it important. Now, uh, one of those fish there things. We have found your car, Mr. Parkus. Why didn't you say so? You didn't give me a chance. I'll get it. Well, where is it? Look, I'd like to have my car if you don't mind. I'd like to talk to you about your car if you don't What do you mind. want to talk for? Just bring it over. I get it stolen, I want it back. What do you got to talk for? Big deal. Car gets stolen, every cop in the city wants to hold a convention. Uh, excuse me, uh, that was traffic, Ben. Uh, Mr. Parker's reported it's stolen, all right. Sure it is. I told you I did. Now, what time was it reported? 7.35. You're satisfied. Now, can I have my car? Uh, not yet, Mr. Parkus. Where were you driving at 7 o'clock? I wasn't driving anywhere at 7 o'clock. I don't see that it's any old business anyhow. Well, it happens to be police business when a woman is killed by your car. What you getting at? About a half an hour before you reported your car stolen, a woman was killed by a hit-and-run driver. We have proof it was your car. But you can't pin it on me. Mr. Parkus, we're not trying to pin anything on you. We'd just like to know what you were doing at 7 o'clock. Ah, you... Somebody steal my car to report it to the police. They accuse me. Nobody's you... accusing you of anything. We just want some information. What are you looking at, Sergeant? This whiskey bottle. Oh, so. It's a whiskey bottle. Cool off, Mr. Parkes. And the man drinking his own house? Yeah, I had a few drinks. It doesn't make me drunk. Can you tell us what you were doing at 7 o'clock? You didn't ask me what I was doing. You asked me what I was driving. I answered that question. Okay, Mr. Parkes. What were you doing? Playing pinochle. The game was over. I went out to get my car. I saw it was gone. That's when I called the police. Who are you playing with? A friend of mine, Joe Bacicalupi. Mind if we call him? Go ahead, call him. Uh, what's his number? Northridge, 56. That uh, won't do any good. He won't be home. That's why we broke up the game early. He said he had to go to Calvindale. He won't be back till tomorrow. You know where we can reach him in Calvindale? No, he didn't tell me. I didn't ask him. Well, it's too bad you didn't ask him. What do you mean? We're going to have to take you in, Mr. Parkes, until your friend can verify your story. Morning, Ben. Hi. What's the lab report on the Parkers car? Fingerprints all belong to Parkers. Lind on the seat matches the jacket he's got on. Mm-hmm. 
Morning, Quine. Uh, this is Parker's friend. His name's... Uh, uh, what'd you say your name was? Balcicalupe. Giuseppe Giovanni Balcicalupe. Yeah, well, this is Lieutenant Guthrie. Well, everybody call me Joe. Uh, have a seat, Joe. Hey, grazie, grazie, Dante. You know Mr. Parkes? Oh, sure, sure, I know him. What's the matter for Parkes? He got a trouble? Well, we don't know. That's what we're trying to find out. Oh, Parkes, he got a temper just like a 60 wild cat. Now, he's a good man, see? Mm -hmm. Were you with him yesterday? Sure, Mike. We play pinocchio. All the time I beat him, he get so mad, he, you know, can't see the cards. <laughs> uh, what time did you start playing? Uh, well, it was uh, maybe, maybe five o'clock. Five o'clock, yeah. Do you remember when you finished the game and left the house? Well, I think, uh, I think maybe half past seven o'clock. Oh. Well, how did you know it was half past seven? Well, it's important I go to Calvindale, see. I tell Parkes, my, he get mad and he say we play one more time. I look, I look at my watch, it's half past seven o'clock. He called me names, my laugh, and I go just the same. Well, thank you, Joe. I guess that'll be all. My, 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 my park, is he's okay? Yeah, yeah, I think he'll be okay. Oh, that's a good, because uh, the park is, way, is a nice Joe, one. He's Joe, a, I look at Joe. That seems to take care of park, has been. Yeah, so is up the alibi. I think I'll run out and see Milliken. Who's Milliken? Lobdell's boss, Milliken Auditing Company. He's a bookkeeper there. Uh -huh. You got something? I don't know. You want me to come along? No. Uh, while I'm going, get out a warrant and search Lobdell's house. Take cargo with you. Okay. Oh, Nasher, on your way back, stop at the grocery store and get me a couple of cans of tomato soup. What? Get them. Two cans of tomato soup. Oh, sure. Two cans of soup. Right away. Lobdell's been with us for over 20 years. Can't picture him getting into any trouble, Lieutenant. Oh, we don't know whether he did or not, Mr. Mulligan. I, um, uh, I wish you wouldn't tell him anything about our talk. Oh, yes, of course. Did he drink or gamble or anything like that? No, not to my knowledge. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you. I'm sorry to take the time. Uh, wait a moment, Lieutenant. I do recall an incident that occurred about uh, two weeks ago. Yes, sir? One day, Lobdell asked me if he could stay and work that night said he wanted to clean up some account that had been piling up. How did I think that he seemed a little nervous when he asked me? Was it uh, unusual for him to work late? No, no, it wasn't that. He's worked late many times. I mentioned it only because of what happened later. Oh, what was that? Well, Mrs. Milliken and I went to the movies that night, and we got out rather late. Those double features run awful long. It was close to midnight, and we had parked near the Star Apartments. Mm -hmm. Well, just as I was about to drive away, I noticed uh, Lavadell going into the building with a woman. My wife's the one who really called my attention to them. She said, look, Henry, there's another woman with that sleeve poodle haircut. May I ever see Lobdell with this woman before? No, no, I never did, Lieutenant. But I've seen the woman before. She's a secretary at Valentine Brodick's, one of our accounts. Mm -hmm. I noticed her on a couple of visits I made there. Uh, not a bad-looking woman. Well, thank you very much. What makes women go in for fads like that? Like what? Oh, those crazy haircuts. <laughs> I wouldn't know, Mr. Milliken. I gave up trying to figure women long ago. Can I help you, sir? I'd like to talk to the manager. I'm Lieutenant Guthrie, Police Department. That would be Mr. Valentine. Yes? Mr. Valentine, there's a Lieutenant Guthrie from the Police Department to see you. Send him in. Let me go right in, Lieutenant. That second door on the left. Thank you. Ah, come in, Lieutenant. Thank you. Have a seat. What can I do for you? You uh, have a young lady here. I don't know her name, but uh, she uh, she has a poodle haircut. Sounds like Miss Parkinson. Uh, mind if I have a couple of minutes with her? Not at all, Lieutenant. Not in trouble, is she? No, but she might be a witness in a hit-and-run case. Oh? Is there some place where I could talk to her in private? Oh, Yes, indeed. You can use the office next door. That'll be fine. Uh, Miss Parkinson. Yes, sir. Uh, this is uh, Lieutenant Guthrie from the police. Uh, he'd like a word with you. How do you do, Miss Parkinson? Hello. Uh, you can go in that office. Uh, please sit down, Miss Parkinson. What is this about? Well, there's nothing to worry about, Miss. You might help us get some information. Uh, do you know Albert Lobdell? Why, yes. For long? Oh, th three, four months. Been seeing him often? Well, I guess so. Why? Was it serious between you? 
Yes. Well, he was serious anyway. Now, how do you mean? Well, we were going to be married and... And... And what, Miss Parkinson? Oh, we were going away. Maybe to Florida. And when did you figure on getting married? We had no date set. Pretty soon, he said. As soon as he had some important business cleaned up, but... I still don't understand. What's this all about? His wife was killed by a hit-and-run car, Miss Parkinson. His wife? Didn't you know Lobdell was married? Certainly I didn't know. Why, that dirty little pipsqueak. Anything else you want to tell me? That cheating, measly run. Married all the time. He isn't anymore. He made a big play for me. Said he made some smart investments. As soon as he cashed in, we'd get married and go away. Well, you certainly got some information. Hello, Ben. Hi. Hello, Cogger. Hi, Ben. Here's your tomato soup. You owe me 36 cents. Oh, thanks. Empty the coffee pot, will you, Pete? Bring it in here with a hot plate. Yeah, all right. How'd you make out at Lobdell's house? Well, this is all we could find. Bank book, pink slip for his car, and this insurance policy. Uh, $60.14. Not much of a balance. He hit the ceiling when we slapped the search warrant on him. When we got through, he insisted on coming with us. Said he was going to make you explain. It was very accommodating of him. He's waiting downstairs. Uh, here you are, Ben. I'll hook it up over there. Then open these cans and put the soup on. Ben, take a look at that insurance policy. Lobdell got sore as a goat when I turned that up. Oh? Uh-huh. Well, this is on her life, not his. $25,000 policy. <laughs> it's dated five months ago, soon after they got married. Hmm. Clause number six. In case of death by accident, the beneficiary to this part. <laughs> yeah, they never learn. There's a double indemnity clause here that pays Lobdell $50,000. And about wraps him up? Yep, just about. Hello, Doc. This is Guthrie. That hit-and-run case, the Lobdell woman. Is there any way to tell if she had a cold? Yeah. Yeah, we can tell. I mean, it isn't too late? No, the symptoms will still be there. Thanks. Well, let me know, will you? Call you right back. Oh, the soup's getting hot, Ben. Oh, it's fine. Should I turn it off? No. Let it boil over. What cooking school did you learn that at? The Lobdell school. Guthrie. The boys had already made tests, and they found nothing to indicate a cold. Not even a sniffle? Not the slightest vestige of a cold, incipient or otherwise. Sorry to disappoint you. Thanks, Doc. You're not disappointing me at all. Bring Lobdell in, Pete. I'm outraged. What's the meaning of having my home searched? Uh, please sit down, Mr. Lobdell. I insist on seeing my lawyer. Why do you think you need a lawyer? Only only to see that my rights are protected. You can see all the lawyers you want. Have a seat, Mr. Lobdell. Your concern over my welfare is very touching. Uh, Lieutenant, as a private citizen, I demand As a you... private citizen, you're entitled to legal counsel. I'm very well aware of that. Sergeant Asher says you didn't want to call your lawyer. I decided against it. After all, I'm not under arrest. Or, or am I? Certainly not. How do you account for your high-handed methods searching my home, prying into my personal papers? I'm sure you're as concerned as we are, Mr. Lobdell, in finding the person who killed your wife. Of course I am. Uh, I thought you'd already found him. No. We found the car, but the owner of the car was not in it when it struck your wife. That's odd. It uh, doesn't make sense. Oh, yes, it does, up to a point. The car was stolen. Stolen? Whoever stole the car might have either killed her by accident or... Something else might have happened. Well, what else could have happened? People have been known to commit suicide, that way. Oh, I see. I, I hadn't thought of that possibility. Tell me, do uh, you think she might have wanted to do away with herself? Well, she was... There were times when she seemed morbid. Mm-hmm. Were you happy together? Oh, we certainly were. Well, your neighbors don't think so, Mr. Lobdell. You mean that nosy Mrs. Judson? Uh, what did your wife do before you were married? She worked as a waitress. Hey, Lieutenant. Yeah? Whatever's cooking on that burner is beginning to boil over. Yeah, yeah it is, isn't it? You want me to get it? Oh, let it go. Well, it'll boil over and run your rug, shouldn't you turn it off? It's tomato soup, Mr. Lobdell. It is? 
There it goes. Okay, turn it off. Now, watch your hand. Don't pick up the part. You'll get burned like I did. Whew. Sure stinks up the office. Well, eight minutes, Mr. Lobdell. I beg your pardon? Tomato soup. Takes about eight minutes to boil. Oh? Huh. So what? That tomato soup I burned my hand on. When did you put it on the fire? Well, I didn't. My wife did. I told you that when you asked me before. Yeah? Well, hey, what's this all about? Oh, I got a little corny. Guess I've been reading too many dime novels. I wanted to know how long it took that soup on your stove to boil. I wanted to break your alibi. Break my... Well, you'd say... Your wife was killed more than an hour before that soup boiled over. I don't know anything about that. I'm not a cook. Your wife couldn't have put it on the stove before she went out. You're under arrest, Mr. Lobdell. On that kind of evidence? You said last night that Mrs. Lobdell had gone to the drugstore to get some cold medicine. Well, that's what she said. The coroner's report showed no sign of a cold. Well, so what? Asher, bring in the lady, will you? Yes, sir. Hey, how, how much longer does this go on? Not long. There's someone I want you to meet. Can I smoke? Sure. Go ahead. Helen! Hey, what are you doing here? What do you think? You lying little runt. Uh, take it easy, Easy miss. my eye. That's the big shot. He was well fixed. We were going to be married. Oh, Helen, please. What about it, Lobdell? Yeah. What about it? All right. I killed her. Take him down to the stenographer, Pete. Remember, friends, Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum refreshes you. Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum gives you real chewing enjoyment. The lively, full-bodied flavor of Wrigley's Spearmint cools your mouth, freshens your taste, sweetens your breath. The smooth, pleasant chewing of Wrigley's Spearmint helps keep you feeling relaxed and satisfied, makes whatever you're doing more enjoyable. Yes, for refreshment plus chewing enjoyment, treat yourself often to Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum. Millions enjoy it daily. Get a few packages and always keep some handy. That's Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum. Healthful, refreshing, delicious. The lineup, where before you pass the innocent, the vagrant, the thief, the murderer. Listen again next week when the makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum again bring you the lineup. May I have your attention, please? You people out there on the other side of the wire in the audience room, may I have your attention, please? Thank you. My name is Cogger, Sergeant Pete Cogger. I'll explain the lineup to you. Each of the suspects you will see will be numbered. I'll call off a number of the names. The lineup, starring Bill Johnstone as Lieutenant Ben Guthrie with Jack Moyles as Sergeant Pete Carger, was written by Joe Steele and edited by Blake Edwards with music by Eddie Dunstetter. Featured in tonight's cast were High Everback, John McIntyre, Dick Ryan, Peter Leeds, Dave Young, Jay Novello, Virginia Gregg, Bob Griffin, and Jeanette Nolan. The lineup was transcribed in Hollywood by Jaime Del Valle. When the bullet strikes, you and only you can give a fighting man back his life by your donations of blood. Call your Red Cross Blood Donor Center tomorrow for an appointment to save a life. This is the CBS Radio Network.